From the Oil City Newsroom in Casper, Wyoming, I'm Trevor T. Trujillo. It is February 19th, 2021, and this is a look at your week's headlines. Coming up in just a few moments. An extensive search of the surrounding area. The body of the miner was located in a nearby dumpster. A child reported missing in the Cheyenne area has been found deceased in a dumpster. We will bring you the latest from a Cheyenne press conference also. The reporting party claimed that a neighbor had pointed a firearm at them. Police say that an argument over smoking led to a gun being brandished in Casper. We'll have that story and... Natrona County COVID-19 vaccinations have opened up for persons age 65 and up. Those stories and more coming up in just a moment, but first, a look at the forecast for the weekend. The National Weather Service is reporting a 50% chance of scattered snow showers for Saturday, February 20th, mostly cloudy otherwise, with a high near 35 degrees, breezy conditions with winds in the 10 to 18 mile per hour range, with gusts possible up to 28 miles per hour. A 30% chance of scattered snow showers will continue into Saturday night, mainly before 8 p.m., with lows around 14 degrees, winds at 7 to 17 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 25 miles per hour possible. Look for your Sunday to be sunny, with a high near 30 degrees, breezy otherwise, with gusts possible of up to 31 miles per hour. Sunday night forecast for lows around 23 degrees. Southwest winds at 20 to 23 miles per hour with gusts upwards of 34 miles per hour possible. Monday, look for sunny conditions with a high near 41, but windy. Our top story this week, the Cheyenne Police Department is saying that the body of a two-year-old child was found deceased in a dumpster. The news came during a live press briefing at Cheyenne's Public Safety Center hosted by the Cheyenne Police Department. During the briefing, Cheyenne PD spokesperson Alexander Farkas confirmed that Athian Rivera had been found deceased in a dumpster. The Cheyenne PD had originally announced via social media on February 19th that the boy was missing from the 500 block of DeSmet Drive about the noon hour. The social media post was later updated to announce that the two-year-old had been found deceased. Cheyenne police officers proceeded to conduct an extensive search of the surrounding area to locate the missing child. DCI, Cheyenne Fire and Rescue, the Laramie County Sheriff's Office, District 2 um, were among agencies involved in helping us conduct the search. The Cheyenne Police Department's K-9 unit also arrived on scene to assist with the search. After an extensive search of the surrounding area, the body of the minor was located in a nearby dumpster. Farkas says that the case is ongoing and still in the early stages, and the Cheyenne PD does not believe there is any immediate danger to the community at this time. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Cheyenne Police Department at 307-637-6525. That phone number again, 307-637-6525. This story is presented as a service of Oil City and our sister website. You can find this full story there and more at oilcity.news and capcity.news, respectively. Wyoming's governor, Mark Gordon, signed an executive order on Wednesday that establishes temporary emergency rules to allow drivers to make extra propane deliveries to homes and businesses. The Wyoming Department of Transportation says that demand for propane, which many people use to heat their homes, has increased because of recent frigid temperatures throughout the state. The order states that the people of the state of Wyoming are faced with low supplies of propane with which to heat their homes and to carry out commerce due to abnormal, exceptionally cold temperatures in the area. YDOT says that the order suspends regulations on driving hours to allow drivers to meet the increased demand but still indicates drivers cannot be on the road when they are fatigued. The order will be effective through March 18th. And speaking of propane, the Mills Police Department has released security images of persons they say may have been involved in the theft of propane tanks from a business in the town of Mills. Mills PD posted the photos to social media on Wednesday and is asking the public's help in identifying the individuals pictured. The theft occurred at the Salt Creek Homax around 2.04 a.m. on February 17th. Two suspects, a male and a female, reportedly stole approximately 14 propane bottles valued at over $800. The suspects were reportedly driving a black GMC Yukon with a temporary tag in the lower back window. 
If you know either individual or have any information regarding the case, please contact the Mills Police Department at 307-266-4796 or submit a tip at millspd.org. Other news from the town of Mills. Mills is donating two portable classroom buildings to the city of Casper for use at the Regional Fire Training Center. Casper Fire EMS Department Deputy Chief Cameron Siplon told the Casper City Council on Tuesday that the training facility currently has no classroom space. He said that this discussion came up at a meeting of fire chiefs in Natrona County recently. Mills Fire Chief Dave North said that Mills had two portable classrooms, which were previously used before the closure of Natrona County School District schools in Mills, that could be made available for the training facility. The buildings have been inspected and deemed safe. Transporting the buildings to their new home will cost about $6,000. The Casper City Council authorized acceptance of the donation from Mills during their Tuesday, February 16th meeting. When we return... After a drug-sniffing canine conducted a free air sniff and indicated on the vehicle, troopers searched and reported finding approximately 63.8 pounds of suspected marijuana. The past several days have seen three significant marijuana busts on Wyoming highways. We'll have those details for you. Also, a suspect is facing an aggravated assault charge after being accused of brandishing a firearm during an argument. We'll have those stories and more for you after this. This is Meryl Streep. Over the years, I have played some characters you could call controlling, but the truth is, there's so much in life we can't control. But here's something we can, colorectal cancer. It affects men and women, and it's the second leading cancer killer in the US, which is astounding, considering it's almost entirely preventable. Here's how. Most colon cancers start as polyps, and screening helps find polyps so they can be removed before they even turn into cancer. Screening also finds this cancer early, when treatment works best. For me, screening was simple and quick. It was no big deal, except for the huge sense of relief you feel afterwards. There are several tests that you can choose from. If you're 50 or older, you should talk to your doctor. Decide which one's right for you. Take control. Do everything you can to prevent colon cancer. Screening saves lives. It could really save your life. For more information, call 1-800-CDC-INFO. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. As a doctor, it's my job to remind parents that teens and preteens need their vaccinations too. Staying organized at work is one thing, but as a mom of a preteen and a teen, it's tough to keep up with school, sports, drama, everything. With so much going on, I made it a priority to protect my daughter and my son. Next time you take your kids to the doctor or nurse, ask if your preteen or teen need shots to protect against serious diseases. www.cdc.gov From the Oil City Newsroom, I'm Trevor T. Trujillo. This look at your week's headlines continues. Casper Police Department says that a man is in custody after brandishing a firearm during an argument over smoking. James Bunderson, age 64, was arrested during the afternoon hours of February 18th and recommended for a felony charge of aggravated assault. The Casper Police Department says that they responded to the 800 block of East Yellowstone Highway for a reported weapons offense at approximately 3.30 p.m. on Thursday. A reporting party told dispatch that a neighbor had pointed a firearm at them. Upon arrival at the scene, officers spoke with both individuals involved. Ultimately, Officers were told that one of the individuals was smoking tobacco outside, angering their neighbor. After the individual who was smoking continued to do so, the neighbor went inside their residence, retrieved a firearm, made threats with the firearm, and pointed it at the individual who was smoking. At that time, the individual who was smoking went inside their apartment and called police. That comment from Casper Police Department spokesperson Rebecca Ladd. No shots were fired in the incident and there were no injuries reported. Bunderson was taken into custody and transported to the Natrona County Detention Center. And a Valentine's Day traffic stop for a turn signal violation led to a search which yielded a significant amount of suspected marijuana. John Rodell has more from Cheyenne and Cap City News. The Wyoming Highway Patrol is reporting that a canine sniffing dog helped troopers to discover over 63 pounds of marijuana during a traffic stop on I-25 in Laramie County. Michael Savell, age 65, of Washington, 
was arrested by the Wyoming Highway Patrol on February 14, 2021 in Laramie County and was charged with possession of marijuana and possession of marijuana with intent to deliver. Court papers filed by Wyoming Highway Patrol troopers say that Savell was originally pulled over after they observed him making a turn signal violation. After a drug-sniffing canine conducted a free air sniff and indicated on the vehicle, troopers searched and reported finding approximately 63.8 pounds of suspected marijuana in two vacuum-sealed packages in the trunk of the vehicle. If convicted on both felony counts, Savell could face a fine of up to $20,000 and a prison sentence of up to 15 years. This is John Rodell with Cap City News. That wasn't the only significant marijuana bust on Wyoming highways in recent news. On February 9th, a 50-year-old suspect was also arrested in Laramie County after a significant amount of marijuana was found during a traffic stop. Troopers say that Florida resident Barbara Hilliard was originally pulled over for allegedly following a semi-truck too closely while on Interstate 80 in Laramie County. Troopers say that the vehicle was a rental and that Hilliard was not the authorized driver. A subsequent indication from a drug-sniffing canine indicated on the vehicle. A search reportedly yielded a pizza box full of approximately one pound of THC shatter. 69 pounds of raw marijuana was also located in the vehicle. And in Natrona County, two suspects have been arrested and each faces a felony charge after agents with the Wyoming Division of Criminal Investigation alleged that approximately 150 pounds of raw marijuana was found in the pair's vehicle. Chu Yang and Pao Vang, both age 30, of Fresno, California, were arrested on February 8th. Vang faces a charge of possession of a controlled substance in a felony weight. Yang faces a charge of conspiracy to possess a controlled substance in a felony weight. DCI agents say that Vang was identified as the driver of a 2007 Nissan Armada that was pulled over by Wyoming Highway Patrol in Natrona County. An affidavit filed in the case says that the WHP initiated the stop because the driver allegedly failed to maintain a single lane of travel. During the contact, troopers reported the odor of raw marijuana coming from inside the suspect vehicle. A subsequent search yielded numerous large garbage bags containing approximately 150 pounds of marijuana. As always, all of those cited or arrested in crime stories are presumed innocent until convicted in a court of law. Charges are subject to change following official filings from the appropriate prosecuting attorney's office. Coming up in just a moment, the Casper City Council has passed changes to the city's prostitution laws. We'll have details on that when we return. Before you know it, she talks. Before you know it, she walks. Before you know it, she knows you. Before you know it, she has a heart. Before you know you're pregnant, when your baby's no bigger than a grain of rice. Before she's a twinkle in your eye, that's when you need to take folic acid every day. After that, it's too late to prevent some serious birth defects. Folic acid now, before you know it. Okay. Any abstention or nay votes? All voting aye. Aye. Please record the vote. All members voting aye. Motion passed. The Casper City Council passed changes to the city's prostitution laws on third reading on Tuesday. The aim is to give law enforcement more ability to act in cases of prostitution involving human trafficking, that according to officials from the city. Before passing the new prostitution ordinance, council member Kyle Gamroth made a motion to amend the proposed definition of performance prostitution. Gamroth discussed the language of the amendment at a February 9th work session. Since I was the one that brought it up, I'd just like to clarify. Um, uh, I wasn't thinking so much film stu studios. It was more just streaming of online content. Um, there's various mediums or platforms or applications that people can use to stream content. And so um, that's what I was worried about is people within the confines of their own home, you know, um, using their phone or their webcam or whatever to stream content. That audio comes to you courtesy of the city of Casper. The amendment, which was adopted by the city council, stipulates that the prohibited acts of prostitution covered under the ordinance must take place in a physical space where both the person performing the prohibited act and the person paying for the act are located. The new ordinance defines performance prostitution as, quote, any touching or manipulation or fondling of the sex organs and or areola by one person upon themselves or by one person 
upon the person of another, whether by touch or the physical use of other items, for the purposes of sexually arousing or sexually gratifying the person who paid for and or financed the sexual arousal or sexual gratification. With the amendment passed on Tuesday, performance prostitution is only prohibited if performed by someone, quote, in the same building, structure, vehicle, or area as the persons being touched or touching, end quote. During the February 9th work session, Casper City Council person Amber Pollock asked Casper City Attorney Don Henley to clarify the language. Mr. Henley, are, is there a reason that we are choosing to get so broad as to say building and structure versus just room? You know, uh, that was kind of what I was looking at with that first ordinance, that it was too too narrow because then I thought, well, someone will put up a window wall and so, or someone will put up a rice paper wall and, and say, well, we really weren't violating this, but still we'll have the problems of the sexual trafficking as well as then the, uh, the, the, the variety of actions that can happen in that circumstance. The new ordinance adds language which aims to give law enforcement an ability to deal with not only people engaged in acts of prostitution, but also people who financially benefit from prostitution by any means. The ordinance attempts to strengthen language which make building or business owners criminally responsible for prostitution that occurs within their business. Links to the full language of the new ordinance is available on the city's website and on our homepage, oilcity.news. Wrapping things up tonight, the Casper Natrona County Health Department said on Thursday that any resident of the county who is 65 years of age or older is now eligible to receive a COVID-19 vaccination. Previously, people 65 and up could sign up for a wait list. Groups currently eligible in Natrona County to receive a COVID-19 vaccination include anyone 65 and over, K-12 through K through school staff, child care providers, health care workers, and first responders. Casper and Natrona County health officials say that individuals 16 to 64 with pre-existing medical conditions are the next group that will be considered eligible for the vaccines. Both the Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines require two doses for maximum effectiveness. And that's going to wrap things up for this look at This Week in the Oil City. All of these stories and many, many more are available first, fast, and free at our website, oilcity.news in Casper and capcity.news in Cheyenne. Find us on Facebook and give us a follow, and be sure to subscribe to our daily newsletters so you don't miss a single headline. From the Oil City Newsroom, I'm Trevor T. Trujillo. Have a safe and pleasant week, and take care out there.